We thank our presenting sponsor, Bank of America, for its continued partnership with the Suffolk County Vanderbilt Museum. Bank of America is a major supporter of more than 2,000 cultural organizations across the country and is committed to supporting local partners like the Vanderbilt to ensure that neighborhoods remain strong and vibrant. Bank of America's support allows us to bring these intriguing pieces of Vanderbilt family history to you and your family in the comfort of your home through Moments in History. Mr. Vanderbilt's mother, Alva Belmont, was one of the most unexpected supporters of the women's suffrage movement. Born to a wealthy Southern family and married into the New York elite, Alva's life was the typical example of a 19th century socialite. However, as privileged as she was, Alva was deeply aware of the stark inequality between men and women in American society. By the 20th century, Alva used her wealth status, and wiles to fight for the rights of women at home and abroad. Born Alva Erskine Smith, Alva became a Vanderbilt when she married William K. Vanderbilt Sr. in 1875. Quick-witted and politically savvy, Alva established the newly wealthy Vanderbilt family among New York's high society. By 1895, Alva's marriage had fallen apart and, to the shock of the New York elite, Alva divorced Vanderbilt and later married Oliver Belmont. Upon her second husband's sudden and tragic death in 1908, Alva threw herself into several charitable projects. After attending a meeting of suffragists in New York, a spark was lit, and a year later, she attended the International Suffrage Alliance Convention in London. Inspired by the words and actions of the women at the convention, Alva officially joined the National American Woman's Suffrage Association, or NAWSA. She used her resources to move the organization's headquarters to a new office in New York City and funded a new National Press Bureau, along with several other women's suffrage groups throughout America and the United Kingdom. She also founded the Political Equality Union in New York, working to elect candidates who would support women's voting rights. In 1909, Alva opened her Newport estate, Marble House, to a series of lectures on women's suffrage. Speakers were prominent figures within the movement, such as author Julia Ward Howe and NAWSA President Anna Shaw. Ticket holders for the lectures also received tours of the opulent estate, and these events attracted more than 1,100 attendees. Alva again opened Marble House in 1914 for the Conference of Great Women, where both she and her daughter, Consuelo, were among the speakers. By 1916, Alva's work with the women's suffrage movement reached new heights. Along with fellow activist Alice Paul, Alva established the National Woman's Party, or NWP, which sought to give women the right to vote nationwide. Alva's support of the women's suffrage movement played a significant role in the work of the NWP. Not only did she provide financial resources to fund ambitious campaigns and projects, but her high social status provided the movement with publicity and respectability in their efforts. In 1920, the NWP's efforts paid off and the 19th Amendment was ratified, giving women nationwide the right to vote. With its mission fulfilled, Alva and her fellow activists shifted the group's focus towards protecting and expanding women's social, political, and economic equality. Even after moving to France in the 1920s to be closer to her daughter, Alva was still heavily involved with the fight for women's rights. With Alice Paul and other suffragists, Alva formed the International Advisory Committee of the National Women's Party to aid in women's rights issues abroad as well as at home. Alva's activism continued until her death in 1933 due to heart and bronchial complications after suffering a stroke. After 23 years of passionately dedicating time, money, 
and resources to the movement, Alva was treated as a fallen hero upon her death. At her funeral, Alva was tended by 20 women pallbearers, and upon being laid to rest, her casket was draped with an NWP banner, as well as a protest banner featuring a quote by Susan B. Anthony, Failure is impossible. <laughs>